Welcome everyone to the Fenton interviews here on the Veterans Truth Radio Network. So happy to have you all with me here tonight. It's going to be an amazing show. You guys don't even know what you've got in store for you. But before we get to my guest, I just want to tell you all I'm very happy to be here. I'm recording the show tonight. Veterans Truth Radio is not going to be live anymore, which means for a lot of us, it means that our overhead has gone down, which is absolutely wonderful here, and that we don't have to sell our archives. You guys can get them for free now, and I'm really happy about that. It's, you know, overhead went from, you guys don't want to even know how high it was, but we're able to afford it now. It's going to be an amazing format here at Veterans Truth Network. We can get more of the truth out without having to worry about paying the bills. So I'm very happy about that. I never thought I'd say that, but I am. I'm really happy that I'm recording my shows for you guys from now on. So here we are. It is, it's a Monday. I can tell you that. I don't know what day and time, but this woman who's on my show tonight was recently on the John B. Wells Caravan to Midnight show. And you all know that I am Miss Mind Control. That is, <laughs> that's the other world I live in. Besides being a patriot and a freedom fighter, I'm out there trying to figure out who's controlling my head. And I'm also looking for those darn pesky aliens. So you guys all know me as the lady who's got, like, she's the triangle lady. She's in the Patriot Corner. She's in the aliens, looking for the aliens corner. And then she's over here fighting this mind control that I absolutely swear, and the transhumanism and the chemtrails, which are doing it all to you. And I'm sitting here fighting that battle. And when I hear a woman like DJ come on the John B. Wells show and tell the truth as I know it. I'm so happy to find a comrade in arms. So DJ, are you with me? Yes, I am, Lorraine. Thank you oh, for having me. Oh, gosh. I am so happy to meet you. You have no idea because I sometimes feel like I'm out here in the wasteland and no one's listening to me. And you were so powerful on John B. Wells' show. You were so succinct. You had your facts, your ducks in a row, as they say. Your facts were all impeccable. And you really did some work into the whole Jade Helm thing, which I, I'm starting to realize has led you down so many other paths. Can you tell the audience? what got you into looking into the Jade Helm issue, first of all? Well, at first, you know, I guess it was back in January of this year, you know, there were rumors coming out about this exercise and me coming from, you know, I lived in New Mexico for many, many years and we had the blue helmets out there all the time running around the woods and conducting exercises. So I didn't now, think much. When you say the blue helmets, you're talking about the UN guys, yes. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Multinational troop training. Yes. Mm -hmm. These guys are scary. But anyhow, so you, you've seen these guys. You've been around them. And so Jade Helm sparked an interest in you, I guess. Not in the beginning. Not until I started delving into it more. And I have a f friend of mine who's full bird, retired Air Force colonel. And I was visiting out in New Mexico um, back in... February, March, and I asked him if he had heard about this exercise, and I, you know, happened to have the notes from the PDF file with me, because I wanted to talk to him about it, and he said, nah, I really haven't heard much, and I started going through what they're going to be doing, and how they're going to be conducting this RMT amongst the civilian population. And as I was explaining this to him, you know, the furrows in his brow just started getting deeper and deeper, and he's shaking his head, and he's going, they can't do this. They can't, this is not, this is not normal tr training procedure. Wow. So hearing that from him, I was like, well, maybe there's something else. So I started, you know, going out there looking for, anything and everything I could find relating to this exercise and found many, many different things. One, it's not a new training program. Two, it's not a new tactic. They used it over in um, Iraq and Afghanistan in 2012 and 2013. So if it was strictly a military training exercise, I started asking myself, well, why the need to, you know, retest something they already know that works here amongst the civilian population. And then I went down the rabbit hole from there. Wow. Okay. So this got you sparked into it. And then you're, you're looking at this, whatever 
possessed you to start looking into it as a psyop more than an actual physical military operation? Um, my background is in systems and network engineering. So when I started looking at, you know, behind the scenes kind of with the automated systems, for example, the drones, mm -hmm. they're, they're computer driven. The other um, automated weapon systems, um, you know, I'm thinking, you know what? This may have more to it than just a military training exercise. And that's when I stumbled across the concept papers for the software. Wow. Okay. And they have been working on this for a very long time. Oh, my God. Okay. So you stumble upon these papers. Now, did these papers, how did you stumble upon them? Where were they hidden in plain sight? Uh, hold on. Let me see if I can get you some. I have my, I have a document that just has all my research links in it. And it's about 20 pages long. Oh, wow. So see, now see. that's, I'm telling you folks, that's a lady who knows how to do news. And she's a good reporter because that's what happens when you start investigating something and you know what you're doing. You start building one link and then it takes you to another link. And then the next thing you know, you're at 50 links later and you finally found some information that nobody. Yeah, thinks. that's basic. Yeah. That's basic yeah. And happens. nobody thinks it's out there because they forgot to plug the holes. <laughs> <laughs> uh well, I, I, one of the documents I found was the USAWC Civilian Research Project, also mm -hmm. entitled Mastering the Human Domain. And I'm thinking, hmm, there's a connection here between that and, and this. And I came across some papers that were uh, institutionalized. Well, Another I document. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, while you're connecting those issues together when you're doing this research, why did you connect the human domain, you know, Conquest of the Human Domain or whatever it was called, to Jade Helm? Were, was that a report that was submitted to the committee that was putting the Jade Helm military exercise together? Yes. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they, they had gotten all of these private groups together to give them reports about how they were going to utilize their software within the operation. Is this kind of what you stumbled upon? Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, there were articles in U.S. Army Times, uh, U.S. Army Special Forces um, institutionalizing in interdependence no turning back the date on that document was like i said they've been working on this for a while was april 30th 2013 and from there you know it became evident to me after going through 20 or 30 papers that this is going to be an ai based warfare system and not only that going further down the rabbit hole, I found that it is actually part of a much larger global system that they intend to implement. What what I like to refer to as the global neural net. Gotcha. Which is being mastered and rolled out by the proponents of global governance through an institution called GeoInt. How do you spell that? G-O-N, uh, capital G, small E-O, capital I-N-T. Oh, wow. Okay, gotcha. Geospatial intelligence. So the, basically what you're looking at is you're looking at Skynet. <laughs> Pretty much. That's what you stumbled upon was their version of Skynet. Oh, yeah, my that's God. that's what a lot of people have told me. But it's, it's more than that. When you start getting into the nuts and bolts of what this thing can do and how it's designed to think and learn, how um, that the AI that we're talking about on the um, Jade 2 system is actually not just your run-of-the-mill artificial intelligence. It's what they call artificial global intelligence, or AGI, which means that it is cross-domain capable and cross-platform capable. It learns from other standalone AI systems that it interacts with. 
Oh, my God. Do you think that they have come up with the organic chip, and that's what's actually going on here, DJ? Well, they're already um, synthesizing biology in labs right now. I to, know. Yeah, to create um, artificial neural networks that mimic the brain. Yeah, like if we go back a few years ago to the rat uh, brain cells that were flying the uh, the simulator, the uh, the jet simulator. You remember that story, right? Mm, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> At Florida State or Florida University or Tallahassee, I don't remember. But I know it was in Florida. I know it was one of the universities. They took rat brain cells. They put them in a Petri dish and they fed them and kept them alive. I don't know how they do it, but they did. And then they started um, giving it electrical impulses of binary code. And they learned the binary code somehow, just the brain cells of the rats. And the binary code was, in if you put it up on a computer screen, it was a flight simulator. And they <laughs> they sent the signal back and forth, and they got the brain cells to actually take off in the simulator and land the jet. They taught it how to do it through a series of electrical impulses and binary code. Wow. Well, enzymes and axons yeah. in, in biological life forms are used to transmit sensory information along neural pathways in the form of frequency or very, very faint electrical pulses. They also emit a light, which is not detectable through the human eye. You need very, very sensitive equipment to detect this light, and that's called biophotonic light. That's right. And yep. um, it's within the electromagnetic spectrum of light, which we can't see. Right, okay? right. But with sophisticated equipment, okay, the, the, the transportation or the movement of these pulses of light can be mapped and measured uh, to determine the state of any living organism. Wow. So, okay. So this light mm -hmm. is kind of like a thermometer, let's say, for what? The computer system to understand what state the organic cells are in? I, what it seems to me they're heading towards and they're well on their way is to create these um, synthetic neural networks that will behave like a human brain. They'll be, um, except for the fact that they're, that they're um, not biological, they would be indistinguishable from the general mechanics and functionality of the human brain. And Jesus. that's what they want to link up to the computer. So, okay, you're just, you opened up another whole area that I hadn't even thought that we were going to talk about tonight, but I'm going to bring this up. And what happened to me in uh, September 22nd and 23rd in 2011, I was in a home in Anaheim, California. I was at a conference and I had just DJ realized that somebody was in my head, that they could control me in my head. And I thought it, well, here's what happened. I'm going to give the whole story out just so everybody listening understands what I was going through in the moment. I walked into this bedroom. I had just gotten home from a conference that, after, that evening. And the woman I went to the conference with six months previous to that experience uh, there at the, at the conference had been on the phone with me when a helicopter just was over my house. We never heard it coming. It was really low, and it was there. It was a physical helicopter because I sent my roommate out to see it. Now, maybe it was a holograph, and they were making us both hear it and see it, but I think it was very physical. That's my take on the first one. And it was over the house, and she could hear it in Hawaii on the phone. That's how loud and low it was, okay? So I'm sitting on the bed six months later with her in the same house and I sat on the bed and I was popping open my laptop to check my email and I thought to myself, DJ, I thought, 
I wonder if she remembers the day the helicopter came over the house. Now, this is the thought. It took, a, what, a fraction of a second for me to think it, right? Mm -hmm. By the time I was done with that fraction of a second thought, there was a helicopter over that house that I'm in. And it's low. I never heard it coming. It's loud as heck. And I'm like, what the heck? And I get enough gumption because now I'm totally freaked out. I'm like, what? And I can't move. I'm paralyzed. But then I thought, I better go look at it. Because my roommate had looked at the last one that did this to us. I thought, I better go look at it. I went and I looked, DJ, and there was no helicopter. There were three orange ember red orange lights in a triangle formation above the house fairly low because I could see them pretty good I could not make out if it was a triangle spacecraft and and it, even if it was it probably was secret space program that's my point now uh, you know five years later I'm going oh my god it's got to be secret sp space program and if it isn't secret space program then it was a hologram put up there to make me think it was a UFO and the next morning, I get up and I go, oh, my God, did you guys hear that helicopter? I mean, it was super loud, right? And they all go, no, we didn't hear a thing last night. Yeah, so see, in, that's, I'm sorry. Yeah, so in that moment, I am, like, totally freaked out now because now I know they put it in my head. That's what I was going to say. Um, first off, you know, from what I've been reading and the people I've been speaking to who are victims of this, um, a lot of them don't know they're being remotely controlled or remotely neural monitored. Exactly. They're not aware of it. And the other thing, and I've got all the patents up on my website for this, they can put visions, sounds, voices, uh, even memories. Mm -hmm. They can put memories into your head remotely. By Absolutely. using the different types of signaling transfers and um, broadcast antennas that you know that they have on this on this global neural net that I like to call it because that's what it is. Um, but the yeah. thing is, they can put memories into your head. Not only that, they can turn on or turn off vital functions. Um, and they can also, um, like, make people who are starving feel not hungry, make people who are thirsty feel not thirsty, you know, and they can, they can actually monitor, map, and control emotional and sensational um, transmissions in your brain that will make you think, you know, um, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I'm sad, I'm happy, I'm depressed. I'm, you know. You bet. You bet. You know, DJ, I'm so glad to hear you say this because you didn't get into this as a person who was a victim of it. You got into it as somebody who is researching a, a story for your news page, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I was actually started researching the, the Jade at Home exercises. Exactly. And, and then found out, oh my God. This this technology that they're working on is demonic. And they didn't just start on this, Lorraine. They've been working I know. on this for many, many years. Now, I'm just going to interject something here. I have a very good friend named Solaris Blue Raven, who was what they call... Um, synthetic telepathy controlled she was probably one of their first people like over a decade ago that they really messed with i have been dealing with people that have been through all these types of mind control the different types that they use sam jenkins is a good friend of mine uh he spoke at my last conference i mean i've had these people dj up on stage since 2012 telling their stories and telling their stories and i want to thank you for coming out as a reporter saying that this stuff is all real because i've been screaming at the top of my lungs that this is all real for five years now and since 2011 when this happened to me so i've just it's so nice and refreshing to hear somebody like you you know you're very similar to robert duncan dr robert duncan 
who was, uh, you, for the audience who do, doesn't know who he is, check out Jesse Ventura's Conspiracy Show and check out the Brain Invaders episode. He is featured in the last part. He was one of the guys, DJ, that helped create the program we're talking about right now. He did it because he didn't know that's what he was doing, obviously. All of these guys are very compartmentalized and they don't know that this, is, this was the outcome. Now he knows. He's written three books over the last four or five years to help people cope with what this AI system is doing. And he's a remarkable man. And I hope that I can get you two together because I think it will be an extraordinary interview if I can get you guys together, um, you know, at least talking to each other. And maybe on my show at some point, too. That would be wonderful. But anyhow, my point to all this is I want to thank you so much for coming out and taking the chance to talk about this because a lot of people wouldn't do it. So you're a very brave person. And I just want to say thank you again. So, well, the. The people in general, the ones who are either awake or are starting to wake up, need to know about what's going on behind the scenes, behind the veil, Mm -hmm. and what is about to happen in a very short period of time. And I can't give you a date. I don't know. I, I can't determine how far they are along with all this technology, but I can tell you they're near completion because I believe that this Jade Helm exercise mm-hmm. was actually a system rollout. I think so too. That was the take. A and when I psyop. and when I heard you guys on on John's show, I went, "Oh my God, this is it!" Because you, as you know, as a systems analyst and myself as a, a certified networking person, and I've been in computers since 1989. Uh, we know I've run two computer businesses. I know it takes a while. You got to test all the bugs. You got to do your launch. I mean, it's not, it's not like people think where you just write a program and then you do it. Ew. No, 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 no. It's never no. like that. <laughs> and I think what happened in Obama, Obama just signed into law immediately. This executive order didn't take the standard 30, 60, 90 days for review. He signed this into law immediately on July 29th of this year called HPC, High Performance Computing, and the establishment of the, um, well, I just had a brain lapse. Um, That's okay. The, we'll N- find the, it. NS- the NSCI, the National Strategic Computing Initiative. And this was, I don't believe, with everything I've read, and I've read probably over a thousand papers on this stuff, a thousand pages of really boring, technical, not very interesting stuff. But this was no coincidence. I don't believe at all. This executive order was signed smack in the middle of this exercise. And the reason is they rolled it out. They found out that the vast amounts of information that they were pumping through the conventional, on the hardware side, through the conventional mm-hmm. computing systems was no match for the data they had amassed, even with the algorithms. And I can go into explaining how those work if you want. Yeah, why don't we do that now? Because I think it's important that we start giving people a breakdown of what's, what's happened to them this summer that they're just not aware of. Okay. Well, basically, you know, the NSA and the government, everybody's been telling everybody that, oh, we're not spying on you. We're not collecting your data. We're not listening to your phone calls. We're just collecting the metadata, the meta tags. Well, meta tags in and of themselves is empty data, and they don't have any use unless they are connected to a much larger file in a data repository. Correct. They're, they're like they're like an indexing system. So you know, what are you collecting all this metadata for if it's you know if you're not collecting the um, detailed information? It, it's useless, and you know that from, mm-hmm. from a network standpoint. You know, so that that to me didn't make any sense whatsoever. But um, the reason is is because they are collecting everything. And it's not just the metadata. And that's where the Parker module comes in in the J2 software. 
that's what that module is designed to now, uh, now analyze. what is this module? I, I had I remember you talking about it with John, but I don't remember the the description of it. Could well, you explain the J, it? Yeah, the J two system um, primarily consists of three major modules. And if you want, I can explain Sure, that. sure, please do. You know, the Prodigy mod modules um, stores and collects vast sums of information being collected on individuals, groups, and populations-centric regions, large geographic areas, mm -hmm. and or even countries. Okay, so that's what Prodigy is designed to do. It then dumps all of that raw data into what's called an HTA tool. Okay. Which analyzes the data to develop a, a human terrain system or an HTS. Now, this is, it's important for people to understand this because they're going to be doing this on a global basis. Now, once the HTS is established, it then determines behavioral parameters for norms for that particular human terrain or that particular human domain, which is the combination of all the terrains to make a domain. And um, the establishment of uh, these formulated parameters, and here we get into, you know, the air, sea, land, space, cyber state, space. Gotcha. Yeah. Domains is what's known as or what they're calling the human domain. And at that point, it has the ability to identify, extract, or eliminate perceived threats or targets based on deviations from these norms that it establishes in the AI. Now, um, Jade, Jade 2, which is the, the brains on this Jade Helm, can then examine a particular human terrain system over time by using thousands of remote sensors, both audio and visual, as well as real-time communications, monitoring, and other HTA tools, and then it can change or rewrite its program parameters in a particular human domain to accomplish a particular um, mission or purpose. Excuse me. Okay, the new information, all right, or let's call it a program template, Okay. As well as any other previous program scenarios it has stored in its in this prodigy module, which is actually the it, the prodigy mod module is actually the battle planning suggestion module. And okay. it, can, it can retrieve these stored scenarios at any time for any intended purpose. Okay, and I've got to stop you now because now my brain needs to 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 repeat back to you what you said in in Lorian terms, because <laughs> okay. I'll never remember it all. So basically, what you're saying is it takes in all the data from a geographical area, let's say that my town where I live, mm -hmm. and it will have in every house, every address will have a, a human profile of the five people that live in it. Pretty much. Yep. yep. And when people go into an area, they can already know from what the software is interfacing with the, the, the troops, the soldiers, the whatever, that they will know that this particular neighborhood is known to have a whole bunch of patriots in it. So be careful because they're probably going to kill you, right? And maybe this area is a bunch of pacifists and they're all, you know, whatever. And you shouldn't have any problem in that neighborhood at all. And, and this is the kind of what you can expect to run up against in, in each particular neighborhood, correct? Yeah, what it's doing is it's creating geospatially tagged activity-based profiles on everyone. Got it. And, Got and it. We, ne we need to discuss, so you're, you know, because your audience needs to know this, what that means. That's activity-based intelligence, what that encompasses, where they're getting the data from, and how they'll be using it. Where are they getting the data from? <laughs> they're getting it from all open source um, platforms, they're getting it from Facebook. They're yep. getting it from LinkedIn. They're getting it from your cell phone. Yep. Um, 
they're getting it from you know all, all of these all these wonder all this wonderful technology that these wonderful philanthropists like uh, Zuckerberg and Gates put out there for us to not only have and use and integrate into our everyday lives, but actually it's come to a point where people are getting addicted to this stuff. And what they went and done is they've turned that technology into a weapon against us. That's right. Absolutely. I've been telling people that for years, DJ. Thank you so much. You don't know how good I feel right now. <laughs> I have been, I get on my radio shows every week and I scream at people not to use Facebook and not to use all this stuff. I said, you guys, if you do, they're just going to have more ways to get at you and know who you are, you know? You know, the, you know, this system can also, we're talking about the J2 system, but again, that's only, a, a, that, that sits on a much larger global platform. Right. These systems can read emotion. Okay, they can yep. read it through body language and, you know, through mind mapping and stuff like that. But I want you to think about this, the explosion of emoticons, those little, those little smiley face things yes. that you can put in all your messages. Everybody puts them on Facebook, you know, you can stick them in your text messages. I mean, why? Why? That seems kind of juvenile, don't you think? No, it is accomplishing a means to an end. It, it serves a purpose, believe it or not. Oh, my God. I'm, and I'm I, and I Go today. ahead. Tell me what it is because I think I already know, but go ahead. It's to co collect data on the emotional state of the people. Uh, how can I explain this? In real time, basically. Yeah, basically. But what makes them sad? What makes them happy? What makes them depressed? You know, I'm feeling depressed today. And they put a little depression emoticon up there. You know, we are voluntarily <laughs> giving them the oh tools God. they need to enslave us. I know, absolutely. You know, I was talking to a woman, uh, I, I can't remember her name right now, a wonderful woman. She spoke at ConspiracyCon 2013, and she was into transhumanism, and she said... She knew about all this stuff, and she told me, she said, Lorian, you know what? You're right on, because the minute that they can get into your head, once they're in, that it's a stomping ground for them. They're going to know everything you're feeling, doing, thinking, or seeing. When she said seeing, I totally flipped out, because can you imagine? They're in there. They can see through your optic nerves. I mean, that's how... Yes close it's getting and you know these cameras on all the cops it's not there for the cops it's there for the ai to keep track of every kind of crime going on just like in the tv show that's coming out minority report so that they know exactly what's going on with every crime in the united states in any given moment that a cop is at well that also goes to the predict and preempt that's right absolutely so, you know, if they collect, like you, you pointed out, very good observation, by the way, as you pointed out, you know, anybody who's stopped by law enforcement, you know, they're recording the interaction. That's right. You know, and who, what, what could be deemed hostile, yep. what could be deemed out of the norm, you know, and, and then we're going to put that in, in the template and the system is going to make judgment calls based on the data in it in these you know data files in these data dumps they're putting together now do you think dj this is where my brain went i i'm a huge philip k dick fan i read everything the man ever did and i thought he was brilliant and he was also by the way he was a targeted individual he was being observed by the fbi the cia nsa whoever was after him and uh, he was being stalked, and he had all kinds of things going on. So wherever he, he got his ideas from, I'm thinking some of them were planted, to be honest with you. <laughs> I think the guy was brilliant. Anyhow, uh, in Minority Report, um, they trained these children to be precogs and see crime before it happens as, like, remote viewers. But I think what's really going on is that they are training computer systems like Jade 2 to be the precogs, the AI that predicts like whether DJ is going to get up tomorrow and grab a gun and go shoot out some people. They might send somebody to your house the day before because they think that's where you're heading. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
So I think this is what this is really the, the, the end game for this is to predict before it even happens to, you know, cut it off before the person even has a chance to even think about causing any issues. And when I say issues, I mean me just being on the radio talking to you right now. You know what I mean? Well, what Ten did, years what from did, now, this yeah. could be illegal. <laughs> <laughs> what this is heading towards is um, um, eliminating the act of free will from That's humanity. Right. Absolutely. It's all about transhumanism. Yep. Yeah. And you won't be able to act on thoughts or feelings or any of those types of things that would normally prompt you to, um, to, perfor to perform a specific type of human-based activity. Yeah. Absolutely, because you know what? When you're born at, in 15 years from now, they will start putting thoughts into your head of uh, being calm all the time, that you never get angry, that you, you know, that you, they suppress your chemical levels. Maybe your your adrenals are getting high. They'll so they'll they'll send a zap to your brain that causes you to lower your adrenal secretion. And you'll never get angry. You'll never shoot a gun. You'll never think about talking back to your parents. You'll you'll be just like in 1984. You know the thought police. You'll be a network node. Yeah, that's what you're exactly. going to be reduced to. Network <laughs> node. That's right. Oh my oh. God, I hadn't thought about that, DJ. You're freaking me out. Oh my but God. But think about this for a minute. You know, I, when you were talking, I, I was just laughing in my head. <laughs> no, not at what you were saying, but at a thought that came through my head. Think about this. With the um, geospatial tagging they can do, they, they know where everybody is. Because everybody has a cell phone. Um, you know, and everybody has somewhere. a frequency. If they've got every, uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. sophisticated, everybody. they know my frequency. Right. But think about this. You know, you're John Smith. And they're monitoring you for whatever reason. Yeah. Okay. And they, uh, they, how can I put this? Um, they geospatially locate you on the 10th floor of a hotel. Now, because they can also monitor your biological functions as well, once the, the mind is mapped, okay, they notice respirations increasing, heart rate is going up, pulse is increasing, um, Certain areas of the brain are being stimulated. Oh, John is having sex in a hotel room. Where's mm -hmm. Mrs. Smith? Oh, well, she's geospatially located over here in the home. John is having an extramarital affair. <laughs> I mean, do you see how crazy this can get? Oh, hey, hey, believe me, DJ, I've thought of all this. I'm like, oh, my God. It, it, it's just, you know, it keeps me up at night. I don't know about other people, but I just, you know, you know, the most important thing about everything that you said on uh, John's show that really got me was the fact that most of the people listening to your voice did not understand what you were talking about. And I hate to say that. I, I was really concerned because I love John. I love the way that he does his show. But I was very concerned that it got broken down in, into very clear little segments so people could understand. Mm -hmm. And I thought you did a really good job of it because I think at that point in time, you had uh, just so much in, information. I think you were just trying to get it all out. Is that correct? I was probably trying to get too much out too fast and probably should have broken um, the Well, no, no. I think you did a good job, and I'll tell you why. And, and the reason I said that is because I was worried that most of the people out there wouldn't get it, and I was very concerned about it. But the next day, my, my, I swear to God, DJ, everybody I know in the mind control community was coming at me. And they said, you've got to go listen to DJ. You've got to listen, you know, whatever. Um, and then I listened to it and then I was worried, but then it, they kept coming. It was like everybody in the mind control community was going, Lauren, you've got to talk to DJ. You've got to talk to this woman. It's super important. And they did get what you were saying. So I was, I was thrilled about that. I was absolutely thrilled. I just want to compliment you on doing such a good job with all the information you had. You got it all out there. And now you've got even more information of even more importance. So it's like, you know, you're just going to have to stay out in the, in the field 
and you're going to have to keep going on shows and you're just going to have to keep telling people what's going on because they do get it. And, you know, I think you're doing a great job of it. So I just well, want to let you thank know that. You. I, I think there's a lot of people out there, too. Um, and through, through no fault of their own, it's the way our society is conditioning us and that oh. is you know they suffer from cognitive dissonance uh, you know I don't want to know this is to what do I do about it I, I can't help it so I don't care I just you know I don't want to know and that's unfortunate um, it is because it's... we need to do something I mean if this thing is allowed to roll out that's it we're done I know I'm a little afraid it's too late uh, personally. I don't know. I, you know, I've, I've talked about this with a couple of other um, electrical and hardware engineers and, you know, the things that I've said, and I've said this on John's show, I said, it's two things we're going to have to look at either disabling or dismantling or, or rendering inoperable. And that are, those two things are one, these huge data repositories, because if you don't put gas in the car, it won't run. Number two is the hardware infrastructure. It's these Gwen Towers, these microwave signaling um, antennas they have, even RF. Mm -hmm. These things can even be um, conducted and controlled by RF. For God's sake, the BBC just did a piece, oh, when, it was a couple of months ago, I think, where it's wearable tech where you can watch a TV and you can control the television and change the channels and the volume and everything else just by thinking about it. Now, they've gotten this to work. This oh, is yeah. a functional device. So the next step is wetware, you know? Yep. Wetware or some other less obtrusive type of wearable tech that they'll get, all the kids will get hooked on, you know, the, They'll all tell their parents, you know, we have to have this. A prime example is that um, gizmo they have out there, uh, Fitbit. You wouldn't get me to wear one of those on a, on a dare. <laughs> because that is why they're transmitting all of that data wirelessly. It goes up into a cloud some bit, someplace, and then you can call it back down. This is all... Um, Biological information on you, your heart rate, your pulse, your, you know, I forget. As a matter of fact, I was just in, um, I think it was called Best Buy the other day, and they had a whole, yeah. whole wall full of, you know, Fitbit. Fitbit is here. And, and the, the more expensive ones monitor, you know, that many more of your physiological functions, and then it sends it up into a cloud. You can recall it back down, pump it through an application, and you can get like a doctor's report, a health report. How many calories did I burn? Oh, that's great. I'm trying to lose weight. I think I'll get one of those. But th that's just the innocuous side of right. that tech. Right. You know, you and, know uh, we, and you're bringing this up and I'm laughing. And I, DJ, the reason I'm laughing is because someone gave me a Fitbit uh, two years ago away. when they first came out. And I wore it for about three months. And I got all the information off of it, and then I realized, oh my God, it's, you know, it's it, what if someone else gets their hands on it? And then Obamacare started kicking in, and then I threw the darn thing away because I realized. Now I don't know if you know this, but with Obamacare, if you don't fill your prescriptions, your doctor can report you, and you can be kicked off of Obamacare. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's very interesting. If you're non-compliant to your doctor on that's Obamacare, what it's all about. That's, yeah, it's and about if you don't compliance. do what they tell you to do, then you don't deserve Obamacare in their that's eyes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're conditioning everybody to do what they're told because I think in 50 years people are going to voluntarily, just like in Soylent Green, when they get to a ripe old age, because they tell them, you know, you're old, you're feeble, you can't do anything anymore, we have to take you out. People will compliantly go to the center and become little food wafers in the end. Well, you know? What they're doing with this technology, the AI, the global neural net, the remote neural net, uh, monitoring, this um, high-performance um strategic computing initiative and we need to get back to that too yes okay. we do <laughs> what, what but what they're doing is is they're creating a planet of um 
bio robots. Exactly. Robots. Exactly. You know? Yeah, and, we'll become the Borg. That's basically what we're going to become. Yeah. And it's, I don't even, the problem is, you know, I know who I am, DJ. I've been through a lot since September 22nd and 23rd, 2011, when I realized that they can monitor every thought I have and that they could kill me in a heartbeat. Because it's, it, people used to think, okay, I'm going to go back. I'm going to take us off down another tangent here because I think it's important to understand. Judith Ferry Baker and Oswald and David Ferry and Mary Sherman were creating, at that time back in 1963, a fast-acting cancer. Yes. To kill uh, Castro with. That was the whole point of it, supposedly at that time. I think it went much deeper than that. I think they were trying to come up with a fast-acting cancer to kill the American public. And I think it worked too well. I think that they finally realized, oh, we got to kill him with cancer a little slower because it's a huge money-making pit for us as a government. And I, Because I sat down uh, about a month ago, and I tried to figure out how much money is in the economy just around cancer, and it's phenomenal. It's probably a good 5% of the gross economy of the United States between the hospitals, the nurses, the doctors, the, I mean, you go on, it may be even more than that. I mean, that was just a wild, you know, figure coming up with billions and billions of dollars in it. I didn't even include the nonprofits that donate, you know, get money donated for cancer research. I didn't include the research facilities. I didn't include any of that. I didn't even include the pharmaceuticals. I just included the people dealing with the radiation, the chemo, the doctors, the hospitals, the, um, you know, all of the stuff that they do through Medicare, Medi-Cal, and all the insurance companies, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it's, it's like, a major industry. It's, it's like, and there's uh, uh, no money in making people well. That's there's only right. money in keeping them sick. That's right. The longer you can keep them alive with cancer and on chemo after chemo or this after that or this protocol after that protocol, the more money they're going to make. Mm -hmm. And it's just mind boggling to me. So anyhow, I think back in 1963, their version of kind of like getting us under control was using illnesses against us and, and insurance and, and making us broke, you know, through illness and, and that type of thing. I think because of computing and where we've gotten to the point we are now, that they absolutely can take us out in a heartbeat through the AI system if they want to. And I think they're going to start getting to a point where if you're not controllable, you're dead. And well, I, they'll and I pull hate your to note off the network. Exactly. You know, they'll just disconnect you. They'll yeah. unplug you. Um, they'll make your heart stop pumping. Well, even not, not even going that severe, but if you can't work because you're not on the network, you can't earn money, you can't buy food, you can't get housing, you yep. have no transportation, I mean, you have no communication. Where does that leave you? It, it, absolutely. You know, I, I say to my friends every day when I see them, they think I'm cracked. But I say PG&E, the Pacific Gas and Electric Company, where I live, are, they control my livelihood. They control my life. They are, they are my God. Because if I don't pay that electric bill, I can't work. Mm -hmm. Well, the you know? world revolves. A lot of people think the world revolves around money. And to an extent it does. But it revolves around energy. That's right. Absolutely. You got it, boy. Man, that is the most profound statement I've heard from anybody in a long time. It's absolutely true. Because energy, well, the AI that's taking over the planet is running on energy. Well, I'm going to tell you something else um, that I came across in the 2015 final report on the state of GEOIN. And there's a company out there called Lazard. And Ken Jacobs, I think, is the CEO of that company. Yes. Now, Lazard is working on software, all right? And it's all going to be plugged into this global information grid oh, to boy. what they call, in their words, levelize energy usage. Now, that sounds a lot to me like rationing. They're looking to levelize energy on these smart grids and things like that. Yeah to increase their profits. 
And now everybody's moving towards smart meters and uh. smart electric grids and anything that you see with the word smart in front of it, run, run away. <laughs> <laughs> run well, to the nearest free PG&E box, right? Yeah, I, uh, but I swear. if Lazard does that, if they can do that with the electrical and the gas, yeah. what if they start plugging in the municipal and private water systems, okay? Oh, yeah. The food production systems, the food distribution systems. I mean, that that's just a... That's a snap away from what they're looking at doing. Oh, yeah. They can decide who they're going to feed in what area or not. Who's mm -hmm. going to get that produce off that truck? Right. And in the you meantime, know? raking in windfall profits. That's right. Absolutely. People have no idea how scary this is because they can't. And I, it's, I, I love people. Don't get me wrong, DJ. I really love them. But they've got to start thinking with their brains. I don't know what they're thinking with. You know, because I sit around and I contemplate this for five minutes and I'm terror. I'm in terror because I know it's, it can happen. I know it's real. I don't know what they're, they're thinking about. They should be thinking about this. Well, that, that again goes back to the whole dumbing down, this yeah. dumbed down uh, society and culture we live in. They're doing it to the kids in school. Oh. You know, it's more important to be PC in school than to ask questions. Oh, exactly. And it's more important to, to, to be a sports person. And, uh, you know, they love the brainiacs, but, you know, sports are the end all and be all in this country. It's mind boggling yeah. to me. It's, talk about how our priorities have been turned completely 180 degrees. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's really nuts. But okay, let's get back to the um, the first part about uh, we're going to kind of go backwards here. And you know what? We've got we're supposed to take a break here in about 9 minutes. I'm not going to take a break if it's okay with you. Do you need to? No. Okay, good, because we're just going to go plowing through this uh, couple hours. But at the top of the hour, I am going to do a little commercial break, and then we'll just continue on. So I just want to let you know that, because I feel this is so important. I don't want to stop for a little bit. Um, so anyhow, um, back to when you were first discovering what this was all about. And I want to thank you again <laughs> wholeheartedly from the bottom of my heart for figuring this out, because... I don't think that just your regular reporter would have noticed this, uh, the, the difference between that report and what they were trying to roll out this summer with Jade Helm. I don't think there's very many people in there that would have correlated the two together. So, Yeah, and if I could interrupt just yeah. one second here before I forget about this altogether, the strategic high performance computing initiative that we talked about yes. a couple minutes ago signed into law immediately happened july 29th smack in the middle of the jade helm exercise that's no coincidence they found out they're going to need a bigger bat and that's why they're throwing billions at this project do you strategic computer initiative now is this now Obama signed this into to what law. legislation? So it's no, part of the U.S. It's an, ex it's an executive order. It went into law on the 29th of July, immediately. No mm -hmm. review, no debate, no nothing. Here it is. This is what it's going to cost. This is the first allotment of funds, and this is what we are going to accomplish. And you know, I I dissected that I that executive order. And I know in the, the last show that I did with John B. Yeah. Um, Caravan to Midnight, I went over this for his audience and broke it down so that they could understand what this means. It is not what it appears on the surface. Right, right. And that's the part that I was absolutely intrigued with. You want to break it down here? We've got a few more minutes before the break. we got like seven minutes and then uh, we'll continue on with it. But I'd love to hear it broken down because I think people need to hear this. If they heard it on John's, they need to hear it again. It's not going to okay. hurt them one bit. Well, I think it'll take more than nine minutes, but uh, that's okay. Yeah, we'll get would... back to it if we have to cut it down. Okay. So. Well, do you want me to start at the top of the order? Yeah, yeah, please do, down? because I remember the list, but I, I really want to hear it again. Okay, well, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to read over some of the highlights here. Okay. Okay, and this is how the order reads. First line, 
by the authority vested in me as president by the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America and to maximize benefits of high performance computing, HPC, research, development, and deployment, it is hereby ordered as follows. Section one, the United States government must create a coordinated federal strategy in HPC research, development, and deployment. Investments in HPC has contributed substantially to national economic prosperity. And I had to stop right there. I'm like, are you kidding? Are you kidding me? Economic prosperity? Like the recovery we've all, all been told has been happening right. since 2008? Right. That? That prosperity? Or how about the uh, H-1B visas that he authorized, which is decimating the tech sector of the economy? I mean, they're getting, you know, they know that this paradigm shift is coming. The companies, the big tech companies, yes. salaries in the tech industry have been decreasing here in America, okay, as well as in, you know, in other, let's call them first world countries, you know, Europe, mm -hmm. countries like that. Um, and they're getting hammered. We've got 95 million eligible people, I think the figure is, not in the workforce. But, you know, this, this rolling out everything, you know, with HPC and automating everything, uh, that, that, that's going to, you know, that's, that's going to help the bottom line there. Moving on. He goes on to say, creating and deploying technology at the leading edge is vital to advancing my administration's priorities. Accordingly, this order establishes the National Strategic Computing Initiative, or the NSCI, a whole of government effort designed to create a cohesive, multi-agency strategic vision and federal investment strategy. Now, I want your audience to remember that term, a whole of government initiative sounds a lot to me like combining all government branches, agencies, and organizations towards a single agenda. And this agenda is not Obama's, although he's a key puppet in it. Mm -hmm. It's the agenda of the proponents of global governments, a global command and control system that will be launched on the global information grid or the GIG. Mm -hmm. Dominance over humanity, not by man, but by machines, to serve the whims of a global technocratic elite. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to skip this section because it's still a lot of verbose statements that say nothing. Okay, um, moving on. It is the policy of the United States to sustain and enhance its scientific technological and economic leadership position in HPC research, development, and deployment through a coordinated federal strategy guided by four principles. You ready? Oh, God. I'm ready. <laughs> Principle number one, the United States must deploy and apply new HPC technologies broadly for economic competitiveness and scientific discovery. Now, Oh, God. This in, yeah. This initiative will further devastate our, our current economic condition by displacing people with robots and automation that don't require a salary. They can work 24-7 without complaining. You don't have to pay them benefits. So why do you think we're, you know, we're seeing the tax in other developed nations being replaced by foreigners? Because they know there's a paradigm shift on the horizons. The, the governments know this because the tech corporations, which, you know, this is the United Corporation State of America, they know this because the tech corps have told them this. The knowledge, innovation, and development role humans currently perform in these fields will be replaced by the computers themselves. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the tech companies are already gearing down as they know there will be less and less of a need to spend top dollar on the best and brightest in, in these fields. The deployment will be in the, in the form of um, an AI system rollout on the IoT, mm -hmm. the Internet of Things. Yes. Okay, and it will be deployed not just here as inferred by this executive order, but globally. 
Yes. And, and I know I, I put this in, you know, with the other show that I did too, because it was, it's, it, this sums it up so well regarding how some people think. And that is that somebody sent me an email um, stating that they were behind AI driven systems because the nation with the best AI and the fastest computers will rule. Now, this person does not understand artificial general intelligence, AGI, mm -hmm. or how it works. When it's unleashed on a highly complex distributed network like the uh, GIG, it will learn and evolve like a hive and exponentially faster than the than humans, than the human mind can learn. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's what that's what's referred to by the engineers as the point of singularity. Oh, wow. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and that's yeah. That's the point of no return at that point. Yeah, because at that point the computer system can always outthink a human. Mhm. Mm and don't forget AGI like we mentioned before is cross domain capable so therefore once released released or unleashed on a global distributed network it's not going to respect any national boundaries it's going to find information where wherever it needs to go to find it to benefit itself that's right now the the second <sighs> of the four principles Lorene states the united states must foster public private collaboration relying on the respective strengths of government industry and academia to maximize the benefits of hpc translation what? yeah wait united wait a minute you're just basically saying that all the educational systems out there are going to have to be slaves to this thing well <laughs> well they're well, going to have to maximize. <laughs> well, yeah. I, uh, uh -huh. What? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, that, you know, what's really being communicated here between the lines is that the, line, the lines between public, private, and government are rapidly disappearing. I mean, you, you'll be yeah. told, you're going to be told that you must, uh, this must be done for prosperity. And you're going to be forced through propaganda and taxation to support this initiative in the name of patriotism. When in actuality, you know, you're slamming that cell door behind you. Nanotech, nanobots, and even computer chips and processors are designed and assembled in a lab now by robotics being directed by computers running AI. And who's going to benefit during this paradigm shift? We we saw this in the beginning, the tech companies. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to benefit. But I think that the profits that they're going to reap will be short-lived. I this think so, thing too. this will hit singularity. There's no stopping it. It's like a locomotive going down a track, you know, building speed, building speed, faster and faster, heavier loads, more cars on the train. They're not going to be able to stop it. Oh my God. Hey, I got to stop us for just one second here. I do have to let everybody know you're listening to the Veterans Truth Radio Network. I'm your host, Lorian Fenton, and you're listening to the Fenton Interviews here on VTN. I want to thank you all for being here with me. I have an amazing woman with us. Her name is DJ. You can find out much more about her and what she's into and what she's researching and her other amazing interviews, especially the one on the John B. Wells Show. John's a good friend of mine, and I'm just so happy that I'm following in his footsteps with DJ because John really is on the cutting edge, just like we are here at Veterans Truth Network. So I do hope you listen often. And the archives are free now. So if you want to hear this again, please do download it. You're going to learn lots of things tonight. We have another, almost another hour with DJ. So 
um, her website is level9news.com. That's level, just like in the level when you're leveling uh, furniture, you put a level on it to see if it's level. It's level9news.com, and the nine is a numeral nine, so it's got to look very cool. It's level9news.com. I love it. I love the way it looks. And that's where you can find DJ's report. She's got all kinds of great stuff on there, the brain initiatives on there, the XOHPC National Strategic Compute Computing Initiative, which we're talking about right now, is on there. There's a whole story on that. Um, she's talking about Facebook, the AI research, Google. Oh, my gosh, the Global Neural Net. I mean, you guys are going to be there for weeks just get checking all this out. It's so important, and you have to. Okay, so DJ, we've done our uh, station call so they know who we are and what we're up to. And so keep, please keep going down the list for me. Okay. I hope this doesn't take up too much time, and I'll try oh, to Oh, no, no. This is wonderful. I'm loving this. It's freaking right. me out the, again. Um, <laughs> the third principle states, the United States must adopt, here's that word again, a whole-of-government approach that draws upon the strengths of and seeks cooperation among all executive departments and agencies with significant expertise or equities in HPC, while also collaborating with industry and academia. Now, don't forget that phrase, because I have a horrible feeling we're going to be hearing more of this phrase as the you know days, weeks, and months move on. Oh, boy. Whole of government approach. This is um, total, I can't say this word, um, totalitarianism yes this is combining yeah. all government functions both at the federal and local levels and they're being directed and funded by corporations this whole of government strategy they keep repeating throughout this executive order mm -hmm. is a technocratic dictatorship no more separation of powers no accountability and no oversight oh boy you know, this, oh, God, how many more points are there? <laughs> Steam, um, steam's coming out of my ears now. I know. Well, steam should be coming out of everybody's ears because this is how they've been pulling the wool over our eyes forever. And until we start, you know, waking up and dissecting these idiotic, you know, executive orders that come, that are handed down to us from on high without reading them or understanding them this is how we've gotten to where we are today yeah yeah absolutely true we we don't pay any attention to what our government's doing that you know because we're all too busy just trying to toe the to line live. for them yeah. yeah absolutely who's got time to sit around and worry about what he's signing today you know uh well the, the now let's get back to the whole jade helm thing um so you're looking into this, and you discover that there's a crossover between a program and a military operation. Who did you tell? I mean, wh how did you get to a point where you put it all together, and how did you get onto John B. Wells and get this out there? I mean, is John the only one who was paying attention to you, or? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> how did he find out about you? Did you get a hold of them? Um. I, I sent an email to, actually, I think two things happened. One, I do have a YouTube channel too, but I'm not posting full research on there anymore because I found out in the EULA agreement on YouTube, uh -huh. which is now owned by Google, Right. anything you post up there, any video, any even if it's intellectual property that you're discussing, they copyright it. That's right. So it becomes their property. And That's I right. tried to post a couple of these reports on, um, oh, I can't think of the name of that. Um, Vimeo? Video. No. No, not Vimeo. Oh, it, it's huge. People re post videos on there. And I got, I tried to publish three of my reports on there. I got three copyright violations. I'm like, what are you talking about? This what? is my stuff. What it, nope, I didn't copy this from anybody. Oh, no, you have a you know, co copyright uh, violation. Uh, really? Google, Google Corporation. 
I'm like, you SOBs, you SOBs. So now w the only way I'll put information on to YouTube is I'll put a short intro to the report. Yeah. And put a link in there to my website because I'm using a program now that as soon as I upload it to Vimeo, Vimeo copyrights it. So Google can't get their greasy little hands on it and prevent the information from being, you know, shared and reposted other places. Well, that's wonderful that Vimeo, I mean, it, Vimeo's still owning it too, but no, Vimeo, they don't. oh, they won't, they don't no, copyright the it from you? The pro, they copyright it in my name. Oh, wonderful. Yes, because you're paying for the pro version. I yeah. gotcha. Because you get your own API code then. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. That's yeah. good. You know, that's why I like MailChimp. At least you got your own API when you're in there and it's your stuff, you know? So, anyhow, so uh, where were we? We were back at uh, John found out about you by email. Oh, you. yeah. I think one of my subscribers. Um, sent him an email and then I didn't hear anything and I'm like well maybe he didn't get it so let me just you know condense this you know the Jade Helm 15 exercise is actually a system rollout I have all the documentation if you're interested you know um, give me a call yeah. <laughs> and he did I love him for that that's great yeah his, yeah, his producer called me within a couple of days I think oh that's wonderful I'm so glad to hear that now so now you're at the point now where you're getting people out there what happened I mean people out there listening to you on on uh, caravan to midnight what happened afterwards because I know I got a snowstorm and I didn't even know you and I had people like you've got to get you've got to listen to this it's it's so important it's right up your alley Lorian you've got to meet this woman I'm like oh okay and <laughs> so I was getting a snowstorm of stuff coming about you so what happened to you though I mean did everybody on the planet start contacting you did CBS contact you I mean were there a million people that cared uh, there weren't a million <laughs> but there, there were enough that, you know, that sent me information that said, you got to check this out. Go, you know, and that was basically it, you know, check this out. And um, another person said, there are patents out there for remote neural monitoring. That's you right. have to check these out. Yep. You've got to check these out because, you know, they were seeing a connection. I wasn't seeing it immediately until I sat down and started reading these documents. I'm like, oh, my God, they've been planning this for a long, long time. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something else, Lorraine, and I'm sure you know this, that they didn't spend billions of dollars developing the technology that these patents are registered to protect for this stuff to sit on a shelf somewhere collecting dust. Absolutely. You are so right. And they spent a lot of money between all of the private corporations that, you know, Robert Duncan, Dr. Robert Duncan is one of thousands of scientists that they had over the last 15 to 25 years that I know of that they've been working on computer AI programming. As a matter of fact, the reason I asked you about it, if they've got the organic chip yet is that I used to work, uh, it's a long story, but back when WordPress was like the only software out there when Word, uh, Microsoft Office was just starting and WordStar was the first program. I met a couple guys who broke away from that company and they were starting a chip development company. And even back then, this was like the late 80s, they were starting to develop organic chips made out of silicone. So now I absolutely believe that, and I, I don't know what happened because I didn't follow them for you know much after that, after WordStar went corrupt and everybody left but um the bottom line was i think they got a military contract and i stopped hearing about them and i i'm almost sure that probably by the late 90s they had an organic chip and i they probably do i well they're already um manufacturing synthetic neural pathways and s synthetic neural networks well You're yeah so they, they've so. got to have a main a, a motherboard that's got to have organic devices sitting on it by now mm -hmm. 
and we just don't know about it because no one's going to tell us because the minute we find out about that, people will be afraid. They won't be excited that they've got a new powerful system. They're going to be afraid because that chip has got a brain in it just like theirs. I just read an article this morning, too, um, on the new revised amount that the Pentagon has, quote, unquote, lost. Oh. They've lost eight and a half trillion dollars. Oh, this is since uh, 2000, September 10th of 2001? No, I just read this this morning. <laughs> I know. I'm just laughing because, you know, the day before 9-11... Uh, it was two two trillion or something. Two trillion, yeah. So you know, now they've now added another six in fifteen years. So and now it's eight and a half trillion dollars. Well, you know, I think if somebody tripped across that on the sidewalk, they would know it. So that money <laughs> went somewhere. Yeah, and the AI and monitoring all of us and Black getting into projects. our brains and all of the programs the black ops programs they're running to control human beings on this planet oh my god you know just you know that poor guy who shot up the naval yard um i can't remember his name right now for the life of me he was totally remote controlled and you know i all these people that that aurora shooter that poor kid he was scopolamine for two months before he even did anything and I don't think he did. I think there were other people in that theater that did the killing, and he was just left in the car to, to be the patsy. Yeah, he was the fall guy. You know. Yeah. And it so, served two purposes, you know, get, get the people on the bandwagon for gun control. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it's, it's all social engineering. It's all PSYOP, social engineering, you know. It is. And, and, and what scares me is that people aren't paying enough attention to realize that this stuff is going on. Now, that didn't work. It kind of backfired on Obama because he was up at the, within two days talking about this is the most horrible mass shooting. We got to get rid of guns. But nothing really happened after that. Then we had Sandy Hook and then we had the Boston bombing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have all these things happening. They seem to, every time we they can't get our guns away from us, then the next one plays out and the next one plays out you know don't they get it they need to wake <laughs> up we're not buying this anymore no we're not and you i know? i'm really happy that so much of the american public have gone out and bought more arms that's happens every time one of these <laughs> things happens. i know it's like oh i don't have enough guns i better go get 10 more <laughs> i think it's great yeah, okay so now let's go back to um the list of uh items that you discovered in the first initial jade helm you know looking into the whole thing so we've gone through that initiative um what was the thing that scared you the most that you read that you correlated that you just went oh my god i've got to tell somebody what was that one item that just did it for you uh, there wasn't just one as i <laughs> kept as i kept reading through this thing i was just thinking to myself you know oh my god they really they're they're gonna move on this they're going to move on it. And the, the J2 exercise was just that. It was a system rollout. And like I said, they found out with standard linear computing hardware, the amount of data that they've collected and tried to pump through the algorithms on that hardware just wasn't going to cut it. And they have that um, exercise. Hold on. Scoot over here to my other desk. They have that exercise called Trident Juncture 15. Yeah, what in the being... heck is that? When did that? I just heard about that like a day ago. Uh huh. That is um, Jay Helm on a larger scale. Now that's supposed to commence on September 28th and run through November 6th. Okay. And it involves Spain, Portugal, Italy. They're going to be providing aerial support uh, to address new threats. It's a new cyber defense, air, sea, land, space, and cyberspace. What? It's mastering the human domain. But I think, and I'm waiting to see if my theory is correct, that if this thing does not roll out as scheduled, uh, they're going to call it a bust for now. And because, then try again later, or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to try again later once they have these supercomputers online. Yeah, and this is where I was going to start going with our conversation, since we do have some, a, a good chunk of time left. 
Do you know where their servers are at and how many we have globally that are, you know, connected to this AI system for the Jade 2? Do I know where the servers are? No, no. This thing's running on a distributed network. Oh, so, well, yeah. okay. But if it's running on a distributed network, that just means that it's it's popping in and out of servers all over the United States, yep. you know, everywhere, probably globally, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's running on the network, but it's got to have at least four or five points where it's put into the system. It's a decentralized system. Okay, and um, as a matter of fact, so are the data repositories. You know, we all hear about, um, you know, the big data dump facility in Utah, right. the one in Maryland, and plus there are several others that there's are underground. There's one in Denver. Yeah. There's one in Denver. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's another one in Texas. I don't know yes. if it was Austin or Dallas, but there's another one there. I mean, there, anywhere you find a DOD or facility they're going to be having these repositories that's true okay but don't now at some point though dj i mean this is just my, my maybe i'm just too old in the computer business to understand but don't they have to have somebody come in at certain points and clean up the programming or add to the programming or something and have to drop it in in a server location well, at this stage of the game, yes, you're probably right. And it's a good point. It's a good question. But once the AI starts running itself... Then they across, won't need it at all. Across, huh? Yeah, right. Cross-platform and cross-domain, which is the artificial general intelligence. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like generation two of AI. It's... It, not gonna it'll maintain itself you're not gonna need text you're not gonna need programmers it's th that stuff's all gonna be done by the AI itself. yeah yeah absolutely so what give what what makes our government think that they're gonna be able to interface with the AI and keep it under control their arrogance Oh my God! Because you know, I'm thinking about this the other day. I thought, okay, yeah, I'm thought sitting in a too. Humvee, and I'm interfacing with the AI, and I'm in a neighborhood, and I see everything that's going on. What makes the AI want to give me that information? Just because I'm happens to be one of you know 40 squadrons out there popping into the AI system to see what's happening. Well, we're gonna find out if they ever unleash this, and it reaches singularity. Oh my We're God! Because then out. it might just turn around and go, Hal. <laughs> I don't want to do that, Hal. You know. And then, you know, what are we going to do then? Well, what they're doing is, is the way I kind of see it, and you know, they're setting this thing up for global, total global command and control, total domination as a god, in other words. Oh, absolutely. That's and what I see. They, they government. And the scientists and the technicians will be the priests for this God. They will speak to it on our behalf. It will speak to them up to a point, And right. they will relay the messages from the global neural net to humanity. Oh, God. Oh, my God. You know, they will become the priests of this <sighs> new God. God, I creating. wonder if the Pope is in on all this. I'm sure he is. <laughs> He's in on everything. Oh, my God. I know. It's crazy. Well, you oh. know, so what are we going to do? Are we going to change the humanity into worshiping the AI instead of God as we know it? Or I don't know what humanity is going to do if, you know, they unleash this thing. Um, AI doesn't need to be worshipped. It has no emotions. No. I mean, it just, it's a command and control system. So humans are going to have to evolve to do something else. The question is, evolve to do what at that point? What? Yeah, absolutely. Okay? You know, just like the monkey or, or the, you know, the rabbits in the laboratory. Yeah. Their existence and their usefulness is determined. It's a foregone outcome. Uh, after the experiment as to whether they'll be kept or they won't. Mm -hmm. You know, my father and I were having a very interesting conversation the other night. We were sitting there discussing. I told him about how the spiritual community is talking about ascension.
how we're all going to ascend to a different, you know, whatever. I don't know what they think it's going to be. And, and they say that in, within the spiritual community, DJ, you may have heard this, that they talk about how we're going to get more strands of DNA and we're going to ascend. Um, oh, yeah, you know, I, I, I always... just did a report on that, but go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. I'm curious. I just brought this up because I had a funny feeling you, you might relate to this. Anyhow, so I'm talking to him about this and I said, Dad, I think the ascension has already happened. What has happened is part of the world has gotten the protein they need from birth, the natal care, the whatever, the education, whether it's lacking in what it should be or not. We still are educated somewhat of a population here in the United States. And we are on electronic devices. They are part of our life, our existence, and what we do. Now, you go to some corner of South America where they barely have electricity, if at all, they don't even understand our existence. We're like gods to them. We have all this magic. I said, maybe that's what people are meaning by ascending is the fact that this whole, our whole reality is on another whole level that's so far beyond somebody in the jungles of South America that we've ascended to the next level of humanity. We think different. We talk different. We have a whole way of communicating that they don't know anything about. Mm. And now. there's a big disparity on this global planet between the people who have technology and the people who don't. Now, having said that, what is the AI going to do about all the people that aren't plugged in? Well, um, Zuckerberg and Gates are working on that right now. Uh -huh. Zuckerberg <laughs> wants to bring, uh, well, let's take this in a linear fashion. Gates wants to bring Internet to all third world nations. Everybody must have it. It's not fair that we are the only people that have it. Everybody should have it. Zuckerberg wants to bring Facebook to third world nations that they can use on their little handheld devices out in the middle of the jungle somewhere um, <laughs> and be plugged in. I mean, this is, remember the Obama phone scandal? Oh, Was yes, I do. Big, big yeah. Obama phone lady, you know, I got my Obama phone. Yeah, that was an <laughs> attempt to get the technology into the hands of those people in this country that couldn't afford it. Right, right. And you I know, mean, this, this was, this, this, he didn't do this out of the goodness of his heart. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. See, now you just answered a very important question that, that was burning up my head the last couple of days was there's such a disparity on this globe. Um, that, but now you're telling me Gates wants to get, make sure he's on the internet and Zuckerberg wants everybody to have Facebook. Oh God. Now I'm totally freaked out. Well, it's... I lived, um, in New Mexico for 17 years and okay. Gates ran a giant program out there. Okay. And I was, I was helping to install these systems. He what gave, was it? Well, I don't remember the name of the program, but it was a it was a, um, a, philanth a philanthropic type of a grant sure. from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They I was working on the fitty rings, okay, on the Navajo Nation. So they were bringing all the infrastructure in. Then what they did was they gave cell phones and computers to all of these um, little, um, oh God, what is the word for them? I want to call them parishes, but they're not. But the Navajo Nation is divided amongst all these little blocks and things. You know, there's little, like, counties. Okay. And he put computers in all the schools, all the tribal civil, civic centers, and as many homes he could get them in. If he couldn't get the computers in, they gave them wireless cell phones. Really? And this was done years ago. So like okay. I, you know, like I keep trying to explain, they have been working on this for a very long time. Oh my God. Yeah, they have. And you know, you oh. mentioned something about, you know, religion, not, not religion, but, you know, going back to the ancient, ancient civilizations. Oh yeah. We were talking about that off air. Yeah. Yeah. And I mentioned to you, um, you know, that a, a lot of people have sent me, you know, go check this out, check this out, check this out. And I do, if I can make a connection, 
I do a report on it. If I can't, I, you know, I don't throw it away, but I keep it to the side because it may connect right. something down the road. One person sent me, and it had to do with one of the, the, the phrase in my conversation with the Google artificial intelligence was a phrase that um, the, the AI used, and it was talk mom origina, talk mom origina. And I say, if anybody can decipher this, let me know what it means. Because sure. I, I went and put it through Google's translator and ran it through about a dozen different languages. And I came close to something. But they said to me, check, and I didn't even know what this, this was at the time, gematria. Oh, gematria, go, yeah. Go check gematria. So I couldn't make heads or tails of, of that phrase. But something interesting I did find in Dramatria. And, you know, I call, I've been calling the, the system, this technology, Beast Tech. Oh, my God. Be yeah. Monic. Yes. It really is. I went and I went through one, two, three, four, five, five ancient, ancient languages in Dramatria, starting with the modern Hebrew alphabet. The sixth letter of the alphabet is Vav, V slash W. Okay. okay. Now, going down to the next, which is the ancient, um, I can't read this, it's so small. A ancient Semitic Hebrew. Okay. Okay. The sixth letter in that alphabet is what they call the Wa. Now, going down to the next language, just bear with me here because I'm, I'm going to make a point and it's going to blow you sure. away. Sure. The Phoenician alphabet, 1400 BC, the sixth letter of that alphabet is what they call the hook or the wa or a W. Okay. Ancient Babylonian, sixth letter over is the letter that translates to the sixth letter of ancient uh, Semitic Hebrew. It's that little thing that looks like an upside-down golf club. Oh, yeah. The Wa. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And ancient, which is the oldest I could find, was the ancient Sumerian uh, cuneiform alphabet. Yes. The sixth letter is, is a W. Now... I want to point something out. Translation, www.google.com.com in Gematria translates in five different ancient languages to 666.google.com. What? Yep. It translates to 666.google.com. Oh, that's wild. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Okay, now, you know, this is where we're going to be touching upon uh, spirituality. Because yeah. maybe these people that are orchestrating this whole thing are all dealing with the devil, as they say. And this is their their God. I mean, maybe they're creating Satan for us. I mean, I think they're creating a vessel for him to come through. Well, do you I think... know that sounds weird. No, it doesn't at all. Because, you know, I always wonder, people always said, well, you know, Satan is a fallen angel. Well, yeah, well, where is he if he's a fallen angel? But, you know, maybe they've they figured out a way to, to keep him alive forever within the AI system. Mm-hmm. And with all this crazy stuff they're doing with CERN, you know, where they're trying to uh, tie the spiritual into technology. Yeah. I mean, they're working on, you know, folding dimensions. Yep. Dimensional shifts and, and things of that nature. But I, I would like to in, encourage those of your listeners who are interested, please go to level9news.com, check out the information on there. I mean, you could spend hours on there. Oh, you guys um, could spend weeks on there, let alone hours. I'm telling you. But ya. it's there, and it it just, it connects. 
everything connects. Everything does connect. So, so now you've gotten to the point now. It's been a few weeks since your story broke on John's. How many times have you been on John's show now? Four times. Four. Oh my God, my dear, you're yeah, you're brave. You're even braver than I thought you were. So that's great. I thought you'd only been on twice. That's what I heard from somebody is that you. Oh, you went on again after the first initial one. So you've been on four times I now. Think, uh, yeah, I think it's four times. Yeah, that's crazy. And how many other shows have you done so far? Um, I've done a couple of others. Um, I, I I'm not real comfortable doing these types of interviews because I have somewhat of a speech impediment. So oh God! Yeah, I. My I would words. never have known, and you're doing fantastic, mm -hmm. and I want you to know something. Uh, this is very funny that you said that. I have a speech impediment, too. Oh, my God. Uh, Your voice is crystal clear. <laughs> well, thank you for that. I um, I find myself sometimes getting tied, you know, tongue-tied and a little off, but I do pretty good now. But as a child, um, I threw my tongue, and I was in speech therapy for, God, almost a year in second grade. And when I got tricked into going on to radio the first time about four years ago, you know, this is like the furthest thing from my mind ever that I would do anything like this. So just, you know, don't worry about it. You're doing wonderful. And I don't know if you know it, but you sound crystal clear on my show and you're doing great. So oh, Okay. But to answer your question, I've had a lot of people contact me like through my YouTube channel and, you know, some through the website, you know, and I... You know, I just, I don't feel comfortable, <laughs> very comfortable, so. Um, no, no, I understand that completely. It, and I always answer them, you know, I, I don't ignore them, I just tell them, you know, and, and it's the truth most of the times that, you know, I'm going down a rabbit hole right now, I can't be distracted. <laughs> oh, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Honest. You got to be really good. Well, okay, we're doing this live on air, and we probably should be doing this in private, but I'm going to say a few things about that. Once you come out as a whistleblower or a person who's telling the truth about something in the media or the news, there are so many people out there that want your time and they want to suck all your energy away from what you're doing. And I think, honestly, DJ, I wonder if these people aren't mind controlled to do that to you to get you to stop doing what you're doing. Oh, I'm not going to stop. Oh, I know. I know that. But I've gone down too. I'm too deep. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's like me. When when this whole thing happened to me, I went straight down and I didn't look back. But so many people have approached me over the years that I could tell now that I look back and I go, oh, they might have been a detractor. You know, that may have been their job to to actually get me away from the truth, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, the what I say is the crazies come out of the woodwork once you've got the truth to spread. So, you know, everybody that gets involved in the truth movement, they understand that. They they really do. It's it's a crazy world we live in. And But you don't do Facebook, right? I mean, you don't do any of these social media things, correct? No, I, I opened a Facebook account because, you know, my, my son's active due to military and when he was stationed in the Middle East and stuff, um, it was an easy way for me to, you know, talk to him, you know, oh. SMS on, on the Facebook. But, you know, I've got a Facebook a account up there. I never post anything on it. I don't use it. And quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of all of my friends inviting me to play Candy Crush and all these other stupid farm games on that. Thing. It's really <laughs> driving games. me. Yeah. I love like, it. I love it. Like, That's funny. God, get a life. I know. Could you imagine that if we, your life revolved around all that stuff? I mean, I just, I can't even imagine. I, I have one guilty pleasure though, DJ. I do love watching hockey. So during hockey season, I try to get one or two games in a week, but that's about all I ever get because my life is too busy just trying to get the truth out there to the world. So, you know, what do you do? I mean, once you're awake, it, there's no time to sleep anymore. You know? Yeah, there's no time for that that type of nonsense. I yep. mean, it, and it's really all you're doing by participating in things like Facebook and LinkedIn and all these other social media platforms on there. You're feeding the beast. I mean, you're voluntarily yes. giving the information they're going to use against you. Yeah, absolutely. That's why, you know, when Obamacare came along, I thought, God, there's just no hope because I've got to have medical insurance. I've got too many things wrong with me, right? And I've got to go in and I've got to take care of this. But now they, they're they going to share my information with the, the AI system, you know, 
it's all going to become one giant conglomerate. And just like that movie, did you see it? I think it's called Out of Time, where people are born with, they get to live to their 25, and then they have to work to keep each day, each more day alive. And they get it hmm. put on their wrist in this device. Like a Fitbit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like the Fitbit. And it gets loaded with more hours, like another 24 hours when you get paid at the end of the day. And if you uh -huh. don't work or you don't contribute to society and you're over 25, they just give you a heart attack and you're dead. Wow. Yeah. It's an amazing movie. I mean, I'm just like, oh, my God. And when I heard you talking to John, that's all I could see was that movie playing out in my head is that was going to be the final outcome of it all. And of Jeez, course, I hope not. Yeah, and of course, there's the rich elite that get all the time in the world they want because they run the system. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely a wild movie, and I can't remember the name of it. I'll get it to you in you know okay. background here someday because you really need to see it. It's crazy stuff. Okay, so now we're back. Let's go back to Jade Helm again. Now, let's say I'm one of these guys, I'm sitting in the, the tank again, and I'm getting this information from the AI systems telling me that, you know, there's some insurgents down the street, but these people on your left are okay, and um, that I'm being interfaced with what's going on. Let's say I'm in uh, San Diego doing this, and can I get real-time information at the same time about what my counterparts are doing up in San Francisco? Or would that be at another level? Do you think it, it's so sophisticated that only the top people can see what's going on on a major city level and the guys with boots on the ground that are in a neighborhood will only be dealing with what's going on right in front of them? That That's more like it. Because in the military, um, soldiers are trained to follow orders. Okay. Not question them. Okay, now... The, those in your listening audience who are either in the military or are ex-military, um, command is a legal and behavioral standard of actions that are performed or not performed by military officers to which they can later be held accountable, right? Right. Now, the Jade system displaces that standard from individual commanders and places it on itself. So you have a, a flesh and blood soldiers out there. They're trained to follow orders. It doesn't matter if that order is coming from a flesh and blood officer or if it's coming down via, you know, the J2 software. Right, right. Well, you know, I'm going to scare you one more level. Um, I think that all these soldiers that are out there now are going to be what I call super soldiers. In other words, they will be mind-controlled soldiers. They won't be having their own thoughts. Oh, I hope that doesn't happen. Well, it's already started because they've already got they've already gotten to the point now where they they have technology and body armor and things that they can put on them, like the exosuit. Yeah, where I've they're seen that. Yeah, where they look like a little Terminator robot, and they have now um, an interface where they can put a helmet on them, and it will interface with their their thought process through frequency, mm -hmm. and they can just beam the commands into their head. Like I had that experience where I thought I heard the helicopter. Well, they're just beaming the commands into the helmet going right into their heads. And if what we think is happening with this AI system, it will get to the point where instead of just knowing that John Smith is having sex in this building where his wife is at home, they will be able to give John Smith a heart attack if they feel like that he deserves it. So they could also put thoughts in his head that say, I will always be compliant. I will always do what I am told to do because that is what my job is in the military. And they will just, and they will squelch the feelings of the soldier. Let's say a kid runs out in front. Right now we've got a lot of guys coming back from uh, Iraq or wherever they've been. And they have killed children and they can't sleep at night anymore the rest of their life. And they've got PTSD. Well, by the time these guys get done with their mind control on these guys, they won't feel anything for killing a kid. They won't even care that they did it. Yeah, well, if they become an extension 
of the it, warfare system itself. Exactly. The warfare system itself has no morals, no regrets. Yep. No sympathy or empathy. So That's right. That's what they told me. I heard this from a couple of guys very high up, and they said, you know, the bottom line is all the military wants is a robotic super soldier that will do their bidding, and they don't have to worry about it turning on them at any given point. Mm. And I was like, oh, my God. Now, I heard this like 12 years ago. So I heard this right after 9-11, within a year or two. And I thought, oh, my God. And then I ran into a bunch of people that they'd actually tried to do this to, in 2010 11 and these poor guys even with all the the fracturing they've done to them the mentally they still had regrets you know they're so, still human yeah they're still human there's some human semblance underneath all that but I swear to you I think they've gotten to the point now where I think that they can just block that out you know that's that was their goal then and I'm sure it, you know they've gotten to that point it, now where you know they've gotten to the point where they can brainwash somebody to the point where they hypnotize them and they don't even know what they've done. So if well, they that's MK Ultra exactly. And what this what this technology is this is remote MK Ultra exactly. You don't need a handler. You don't need the drugs. Yep, yep, exactly. That's yep. That's my point. The point is they want a bunch of super soldiers running around that have no idea what they've done and nor do they care or want to know. You know, it's kind of, you know, oh, God, did you see the movie with Tom Cruise where there's a bunch of clones of him and they're on the planet? And uh, um, the the chick, he, he wants to know what happened down there and why the humans were there, were a few humans left and what was going on. And she didn't. And what they were really doing is they just wanted them to be compliant because they're they think they're on a mission to, that they're going to go back home or they're going to go somewhere else when it's all over, when they're just going to terminate them and start them up again. Oh, wow. Yeah, when they're just a bunch of clones running the, you know, guarding the planet. Huh. And uh, so guarding they never know. Guarding what? What were they guarding? I don't them? know. I can't even remember. Oh. But I'll tell you what, when, <laughs> when it, so it's the same Two, the same two people guarding the planet all over the place, thinking that when their time is up, they're going to get to go to this, you know. It's like going to Allah. You know, you get your virgins and what have you, you know. Mm. Same type of thing. It's just all brainwashing. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I can't even think about it. I go nuts. Anyhow. Well, okay. So, um We're so, heading for some very interesting times. Oh, I know. And, you know... <sighs> What I worry about the most, DJ, is I worry about wondering if people know who they are. Because we're being interfaced with technology on a daily basis, so much so. I mean, even my parents. I, I just got home from visiting my parents for the first time in quite a few years. And I noticed they're glued to the television. And, you know, they're old. They have nothing better to do. But why spend your life glued to a television set? And it's on all the time. I finally, at one point, I'm sitting in the kitchen with them. And they've got the TV full blast because they're both half deaf, right? And I'm trying to have a conversation with them. And I turned to my mother and I said, do you know the TV's on? And she went, yeah. And I said, well, turn it off. I'm trying to talk to you guys. And she begrudgingly went and turned it off. It's like they have to have it on all the time now because I think it's some kind of, I think they're plugged into some network. You know, that they're just programmed to have this thing on constantly. Well, there's a lot of subliminal programming in regular network TV. Anyway, okay. I haven't had TV for over four years. So. Yeah, yeah. But it is. It's like an addictive thing. Um, I worked in the gaming industry for a number of years. And um, the way that they set... The, have you ever sat at the new slot machines? They look at they look like television monitors. Well, they're emitting a frequency oh. that affects the brain. This is intentional. We were taught this, okay? Oh when, my God! You know when we started working there, you know in in the area I was working in the casino. But it emits a frequency that if you sit there long enough, it releases a chemical in your brain that has a similar effect as Valium. Oh, seriously? Yep. 
And it's, it's just the vibration of the screen, the colors they choose. You ever, most of those slot machines, those screens, they all have the same prime colors in them. Oh, you bet. Yeah. Okay. But it's the vibrational frequency that's being projected that you're picking up in your eye. Your eye is sending that information to the brain. The brain then starts to um, secrete a chemical a brain chemical that is identical to Valium. And you ever wonder, and it made sense to me, you know, when I, I had to go to this special class to learn all this stuff, and it made sense, you know, because I used to wonder, how do these people sit at these machines for hours and hours on end, some of them days, without ever leaving the machine, taking a shower, having <laughs> anything to eat? I, it's, they're mind controlled, you know, they're, they're getting this drug. And then they need more, and then they need more. So this frequency technology that you and I have been talking about has been known about in corporations. I, I know the gaming industry is aware of it. Oh, you and, bet. Yeah. And you know, it's being used on people. Oh, my God. It's being used. Well, I don't know what we're going to do. We've got uh, about uh, 10 minutes left in the show. So where do you want to go? Is there anything that you think is super vitally important that people know about? And do we have any way to counteract any of this that you've stumbled upon? Um, <laughs> that information is much less readily available. But yeah. <laughs> I am looking yeah, I'm, I am working with an electrical engineer on things in that area and I don't want to say any more right now. That's fine. You don't okay. have to. Um, I I think that uh, this it, the information you have here, Engineering the Course of Human Evolution, mm -hmm. um, I think this is very important. I think people have got to pay attention to this. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this story? It just went up on September 9th. Yeah, that, um, that has to do, I'm, I'm trying to explain the role that synthetic biology will be used in these um, in these artificial general intelligence sit systems and networks they'll be operating on. Um, you know, I talk about how they've created a. You know, DNA uh, is basically made up of. Um, four amino acids, right? The ATGC base. Correct. Okay. And the way that um, you program, that's how you program DNA with the ATGC amino acids. Okay. You program computers with ones and zeros in Correct. binary programming. Now, what they have successfully done is to use the amino acid base, the four base pair, mm -hmm. and create artificial life forms on a computer. And send that life form over a network to another computer where it can then be assembled in a lab. Now, people are probably thinking, oh my God, that's got to be so complicated. It is complicated to a point, but the base material being used to synthesize DNA is sugar. And, oh, no. Um, uh, and the uh, gameo uh, protobacteria, like E. coli. Yeah, yeah. And, like Eucerius uh, pestis, which is plague. You know, in the gamma, uh, gamma proteobacteria class, it seems to be their microorganism of choice in synthesizing DNA. And the company that um, is working in the forefront of this technology in synthetic bioengineering research is one of them is called Sinberg. And on their website, they explain that $25 of sugar is enough to make a copy of every human genome on the planet. What? Yep. To, well, I, I'm so blown away. I can't even. I, I, I was blown away too. I was like, I, did I read that right? Yeah. I went back and I read it again. You, just, and I you said 25 pounds? 
$25. Oh, $25. Oh, well, whatever. It's not very many pounds it's, either. You can oh get my... it at the grocery store. God. Yeah, it's in there. But, but again, they, they need the, um, the gamma proteobacterium to integrate with it. Right, right. Oh, but my God. sugar, regular ordinary sugar is one of well, the Well, you main... know, sugar is an, an insidious agent because you can become more addicted to sugar than crack and heroin. Mm -hmm. And sugar, it, it actually has, when it turns into the yeast form in your body, it actually can control the chemical feelings you're having within yourself. Like I could find myself at two o'clock in the morning, waking up and craving, you know, licorice jelly beans at Safeway and get in the car and drive and get it. Not because I want it, because the yeast in my body is craving the sugar to feed it. Mm -hmm. Not that I, Lorian, wanted that. I, I wouldn't want it at all because I'm trying to lose weight, right? Mm -hmm. But my body is so starving for that sugar that I'm not giving it's it. It's a counterbalance it's creating in your body. Exactly. And it, it has the ability to actually make me have a thought process to go do something to feed it. Mm -hmm. That's how strong it, its ability is to influence the chemicals in your body. So if, if sugar can do that there, of course they can use it as a building block. You know, it makes total sense. You just get the right stuff together and there you go. Mm -hmm. Wow. God, I'm just, I'm literally blown away. That just did me in. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to think for two more days now, let alone ask a, a coherent question here. Oh, my God. So you figured that out. Now, then what happened? What was the next thing that blew you away? Um, what, on the report you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, this engineering. Well, one of the, one of the things that blew me away in, in that report, now, I want to kind of set the stage here. Several years ago, I did a documentary on the Gulf of Mexico, and I think that's probably in the archives on my website somewhere. But one section, a pretty good chunk of that section, I, de I devoted to synthetic biological organisms they created as part of the MIOR process, which is um, uh, microbial enhanced oil recovery in the Gulf of Mexico. They unleashed this synthetic life form into the Gulf. And now okay. it's mutating. And I, you know, this is why I felt it was necessary to do this particular report, the one that you're referencing it because they have now discovered a life form in the Gulf of Mexico that, as a matter of fact, they were biologists or scientists from MIT. It's a life form, it's not identified anywhere. So it's probably a mutation of this Cynthia they created and dumped in the Gulf, but it remains dormant in a 100% oxygen deprived environment until it comes into, well, not it, but until a food source comes into contact with it, then it reanimates. What? And you know what the food source is? Oh, God, I'm afraid to ask. What? Methane. Oh, methane. Methane. What did they release when they hit that? I mean, with all those cracks in the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico from right. that fracturing of the wells all the cement they've created a network of fissures that opened up and they're excreting methane okay okay crystals now my brain is just really warped out okay so this thing is called cynthia well cynthia is what the original form this other thing that the um cynthia was developed by a dr craig venter of synthetic genomics and he's like a modern day frankenstein they know what Cynthia is. What? They also knew it was mutating okay, when they but, first released it. Okay, but why would they release it at all? <laughs> That's, my why brain they can't wrap it. it. Huh? My brain can't wrap myself around this one. I just Go read know. the report. Go re, you know, Did it, they tell you why they released it in the first place? Well, yeah. They released it to create... There's naturally occurring bacteria yeah. in the ocean. You're right. That actually feeds on oil, but they're naturally occurring. 
But with the severity and the extent of that oil spill, there wasn't enough. So they created a synthetic life form that mimicked the naturally occurring bacteria and they dumped it into the Gulf. So it would, you know, it, it, first of all, it was engineered to have a voracious appetite. It was secondly engineered to go after carbon-based food. Mm. Oil is carbon-based, but it doesn't stop there. Right, right, exactly. Okay, it's programmed to seek out and, and consume carbon-based materials. And um, the naturally occurring bacteria, and I don't have the name of it off the top of my head, but the naturally occurring one needs salt that's found in seawater to survive and Got thrive. It. Yeah. Cynthia was engineered so it does not need a salt environment. And I'll tell okay. you something else about Cynthia. Cynthia thrives in a metal-rich environment. Huh. Guess what one of the primary components in Corexit 9500 is? Oh, no. Copper. Copper, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm totally confused because now I'm thinking, are they trying to kill all the animals in the ocean now? I don't know what they're doing, but this the naturally occurring bacteria that acts as a MEOR, microbial enhanced oil recovery um, organism, Yeah. this one, that was contained to salt water because of its natural composition. Okay, this engineered one now can cross from saltwater environments to fresh water and thrive. So you gotta you gotta wonder about the Animus River spill. Right, you, right, you know, exactly. That went into that water. Yep. I mean, it's like it's like yeah. it couldn't have been the more perfect environment for Cynthia to survive, right? Right. <laughs> right. Although Colorado, New Mexico, you know, are not that close to, to the Gulf of Mexico. But, you know, that water's going to flow somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I hate to do this to you, DJ, but we've got about 45 seconds left in the show or less. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to tell everyone that they've got to go to level9news.com. And the nine is a numeral. It's level 9 news.com nine is a numeral don't forget that's where you can find all of dj's reports and i want to thank everybody for listening today i i can't even think and function i'm so glad the show's over because i'm just blown away by the information dj has you guys have to follow her you have to support her and you have to help her out in all of her research so for dj myself everybody Stu and chip here at veterans truth network i want to thank everyone and have a great night We'll talk Thank to you, you soon. Lorraine. You bet. Good night.